Good morning, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Just now you heard a very inspiring speech uh, by Michael. Michael uh, said, it is the greed which you should control. Same thing was said by Mahatma Gandhi hundred years ago. And several million years ago, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, greed, control. If you don't control greed, if you are greedy, then you are taken to delusion. From delusion to anger, from anger to loss of uh, human intellect, and from a loss of human intellect to destruction. So the greed is not only destroying the world physically, but also the human race we don't control. However, we need to work. Because uh, in India, as he said, on one side there are 1200 billionaires, on the other hand 2 billion poor. And this is the poor, we also have about 40% of our people who are poor in this country. So for them we need to work. And uh, we need to see what's happening for the poor. As you see, almost 42% of the farmers are poor. The demand for food is increasing. The growth in agriculture is stagnant. Uh, farmers are exploited. Or the production is uh, low because of small holding, inefficient use of water, unproductive livestock, outdated technologies, poor value chain, leading a lot of middlemen to exploit, and along with this lack of education, capacity, <coughs> timely finance, these are some of the traditional problems and across our, by our people. And uh, while people are already suffering, we have a new challenge of global warming, which we have already started experiencing. As you have been seeing this year, last year the rainfall was very bad. We don't know whether it's really global warming. But there's every reason to believe that it is because during the, over, during the last hundred years, the ten hottest years were during the last ten, even ten, twenty years. So as a result of uh, likely would have come facing global warming. We are also threatened by the warm weather. When the weather goes up, the sea level rises and uh, there is a threat for about 20,000 villages who, have, who may have to evacuate. In addition to evacuation of the people on the coastal line, you may also have to need help relieve the people who are exposed to cyclones and floods. If the Himalayan rivers start melting, maybe the water availability for the food grain banks of North India will have serious problems affecting our food production by another 35 to 40 percent. Naturally, when the crops fail frequently, the cost of agricultural inputs will go. If there is a dry, prolonged drought or frequent rain, the chances of agriculture failing will be very high, farmers have to re sow, they have to get seeds, they have to get fertilizers or manure. So again and again you require more inputs and more cost. And also the existing varieties may not perform well. Hence the strategy should be to mitigate global warming and how to cope up with our agriculture. So there are experts who have been telling us that we should have renewable energy, we should have efficient energy use, we should have forestation, we should have efficient water use and also promote sustainable agriculture. 
So this, some of these activities you can see the red ones, the energy is far far beyond the farmers or the common people's domain because you know very little can be done, although we can everyone can save the energy. But as agriculturists and farmer friends, we will have a lot of opportunities to promote afforestation, efficient water use as well as sustainable agriculture. So, what, what is sustainable agriculture? In what way we can help? As I can uh, see, there are many ways we can take up sustainable agriculture through development of wastelands. As you are aware, almost 30-35% of the land in India is not properly under green cover. Even about 25-30% of the forests are not devoid of vegetation. So, we can bring, we have, we have almost 9 million hectares of uh, sodic wastelands in uh, Marathi called Kusar, in Hindi we call Behad land. These 9 million hectares of wastelands are because of excessive use of water. Right, right now there was a criticism about the big dams. The problem with big dams is not only taking a large chunk of earth, but also people we are tempted to make misuse of water. It is because the command area where people have more excess of water, they use excess of water. People still think that more water means more crop production. And in this process, they destroy the land. This is how a good fertile land gets transformed into sodic land. You know, we have 9 million hectares. It only indicates if one can take up good management of sodic land, we should be able to bring additional 9 million hectares under irrigation because you, know, you need to reduce water by half and you can also reclaim this land. The land which is having the potential of 8 tons per hectare can is presently under waste condition. That means if we can only focus today on reclamation of uh, sodic land, we should be able to enhance the food production by another 50 million tons per year. So this indicates there is tremendous scope for us. We don't have to feel diffident. We don't have to feel frustrated. There are opportunities provided we are prepared to work. Similarly, soil and water conservation, our rainwater efficiency is only 35%. Remaining 65% of the water gets into prior to soil erosion. Every year, about 10 crore people in this country are affected by floods. 